Mic check one, two. Oh. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, get settled in. We're gonna have a fun ride today. I'll explain more in detail in a couple minutes. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Games stream. I am your host, your guide, your servant, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games, here to give you all the details on Everspace 2. Well, as many as I can provide, as we are in our home stretch to the 1.0 release happening the first half of this year. So, welcome everybody for swinging on in. It's good to see you, good to have you. It's been one heck of a week for us, actually. A lot of stuff going on, it's been good progress. And um, yeah, I think it's gonna be a little bit fun today. We uh, took a little bit of a note out of the community uh, playbook. And um, for those of you who are not aware in the Discord, uh, we kind of chat with you guys from time to time. You know, sometimes we'll do little streams. We haven't done that in a while, but admittedly. Um, but still, we like to engage with you, kind of get your feedback from time to time. And this last weekend, in fact, I had just sent a very casual questionnaire. I just thought it was going to be, you know, very simple. A couple people were going to say some things. And you guys were so thorough with it. We had a, we had a pretty good amount of people respond to it. It's just like, okay, I'm seeing some trends here. So I just wanted to cover what that looks like first to give you some sense of how we are approaching the stream today. In short, I asked what you like about the stream, what you don't. That's, that's really what it comes down to. And what you guys want to see more of happens to be community content. So the second half of our stream, we are going to be highlighting a community build as you probably saw in the thumbnail or the title of the, the stream or whatever. And we're gonna start doing that on a more regular basis. I don't know if it'll happen every week. That would be really awesome, but that would also slow down some other elements, but we're gonna make it happen much, much more frequently. At the end of the stream, we'll also have a community challenge for you all. And when I say challenge, this time it's not a themed screenshot, okay? So it's gonna be something a little bit new and the first time we've ever done it. So I hope you stick around to find out what that is and uh, participate in that along the way. Okay, so we are in the hangar of the home base where we left off at the beginnings of a new fresh save. We are going to be continuing this save in our latest game dev build. This is an internal build that does receive updates. So I can't help it if I accidentally show you stuff that we're tweaking and working on and was added to the back end of the game. You will also see updated in-game cutscenes. Probably not any unique items yet, um, <laughs> but there's a, a number of things. By the way, I should probably clear this data tab. Let's just uh, mark all as red here. 
uh, just, you know, for the sake of not having that yellow marker. Excellent. So yeah, from time to time, you might see something that's completely new, uh, completely different that we've been working on in the background. So without further ado, let's kick off right into where we left off in the story. We got to get some stuff. We, we, got, we got some things. We need to dock at the trading outpost in Union Bridge and move things along. Now, in this playthrough, we are playing on very hard difficulty. Um, I think. We did change that, right? Okay. Yes, excellent. We are playing on very hard difficulty right there. So things might be a little bit rough out of the, the gates, these starting gates. And that's okay. That's okay, because who doesn't like a challenge? So we might even be playing this. Okay, hang on, Dax. I want to talk. So we we might even be playing this to that like authentic level of watching me kind of backtrack in locations, gather some stuff, build up. I want you to see how the game is played without using any cheats. Like I, I want to avoid doing that as much as I possibly can through the course of these streams, all the while receiving questions from you all, answering them, of course, as we're leading up to 1.0. This will be the save that we move all the way up to 1.0 with all of its additions, all of its nuances, with all of its reveals, everything. So. So when you talk to the trader, try to be as boring as possible. I'm flying a stolen combat ship. Well, you'll think of something. Woo! All right. So I, I literally have zero credits. Is that, did I spend them on something? I'm trying to remember what happened. Maybe it was repairs or... All right. So we need to visit the trading outpost. Before I do that, I'm gonna just do a couple of things in the area just to gather some more stuff because we need it. Goodness. Boy, do we. So we're gonna grab this energy sphere dispenser and just bring it around. I also want to make sure you guys are getting well taken care of. I just got a couple frame skips. <clears throat> is everything coming through clearly for you all? Is it, it's looking looking good, looking okay. I want to make sure it's we're giving you an optimized experience here. Yeah, so we got a little bit of goods there. Um, I can't remember if we completed the drone. It looks like we did not gonna gather those things up with our side mission here to kind of bolster the credits just a little bit further but man we need a new energy core like ASAP so let's hear what this guy has to say hi I'm looking for a prime sense STA that's the pre-war model quite rare but I do have one in stock how much is it 4,200 4,000 and 200 yes say you don't happen to be a contractor, do you? Uh, no, I'm just uh, into tech like that. That's all. That's too bad. I could have paid you 2.5k if you'd done a little job for me. All you would need to do is deliver a small package to a dear customer of mine. Really? That's it? Will you do it? Sure. Why not? That doesn't sound very committed. I would be grateful if you'd let me take this job. Good. You'll find the package at the abandoned station nearby. I'll give you further instructions once you're there. All right. There we go. So we've got a uh, means to acquire some more credits because, yeah, we are completely out of them. Um, but otherwise, we can kind of start building ourselves up a little bit further. Hmm. You know, those corrosion missiles are awfully nice in that they uh, bypass shields. But having over twice as many is awfully tempting. As well as the fact that it's gonna do a little bit of work to shields even though we don't wanna fire at shields. I think we're gonna go ahead and swap that for now. Oh, sweet. Starting to clear some challenges, that's also good. Mm, that's also tempting. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and just we're gonna sell us for a little bit more credits instead. Just because we need to be building up. 
We are going to hang on to that, though. That would be nice to have. That would be nice to have. <clears throat> Excellent. Yeah, high capacity being high capacity. Yeah, we, we actually tweaked that a couple weeks ago. I don't think it's in your guys' build. Maybe it is? Shoot. Man, I'm not remembering when we did that. I just remember having a conversation and we were all kind of like, yeah, you know, some of the missiles kind of don't feel good. Look abandoned to me. We need more of them. How many are there? So, yeah. Five. One of them's a pretty nasty viper. I Ooh. knew it. Don't let them get away. This might end poorly because they are <laughs> twice my level if you want to look at it like <laughs> that. So, let's, um, let's be real. Oh, we're dead. We are, we are totally should not have taken this. Hang on a second. Let's see if we can navigate around this anyway. Oh gosh. All right. Okay. All right. Basically every tool we've got to survive this, hopefully. Are we gonna survive? It's gonna be close. Tools. Got four, but the Viper jumped out. Is the package still there? Woo! We'll take it. We'll take it. Don't mind the fact that we're gonna have to spend all our credits to repair that. <sighs> all right. That's all right. There are worse things. What ship types did the group fly? Apart from that elite viper, there were two madcaps, a scout, and a sniper drone. Just as I thought. I hate those guys. Okay. They pestered me to sell them the wares, but I turned them down. They didn't happen to have left their address by any chance. The viper pilot has his lair in Rhodia orbit. I would be very grateful if you could get my package back. This will cost you. How about a raise up to 3.5k? Sounds fair. I'm on it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Flory, all right. You, you called me out well enough. Every tool, and I use all my consumables, my weapons, my devices, but I didn't use my secondaries. You're right. You caught me. Error on my part. All right. That would have definitely helped, too. Ooh, ship color. Navy. Now, ship colors, whenever you find them, the reason why it looks like a rainbow there is because it is randomized upon collection. So you never know what you are going to get. And just before anybody asks if you, if you are going to, that is, you know, we have thought about having certain ship colors located at certain uh, parts of the game or unlocked by like, you know, quest chains and stuff like that. And the long story short is that we don't want to really alienate colors in that way. It's kind of weird. Like, a lot of people like, you know, the color black because of its metallic nature and how it shines on the ship, for example. Um, but we also don't want to impede the ability to acquire it if it's behind something that's too difficult to do. That said, it also does kind of suck if RNG makes it to where it's like the last color you find, which is why we've been considering that option. So just note that there is the possibility of things changing on how to receive colors, but it's also not something that we are, it's not gonna be something super crazy dynamic or dramatic uh, in regards to like the 1.0 release. So just keep that in mind. Iron, wonderful. It's gonna be useful for some perks we get later. So before I get wrecked, we're gonna dock here for two reasons. One, I want to repair, and two, it auto saves. So that way, if something bad happens, I don't have to do that entire nasty conflict again. Let's see, lots, lots of elements here. Let's see, what do we have? I really wanna get my tractor beam up. So, in fact, we are going to untrack repairs and cruise drive for now, so I can really see everything that I need for that tractor beam. And I see where all our credits were put. We put the credits into our perk. That's what happened. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm being dangerous, though, because that is kind of a, an energy suck. Um, wait. 
I want to I want to compare you to the weapon. Thank you. It is kind of an energy suck. Um, and we don't have a lot of energy from our energy core at this point in time. So it could be could be dangerous doing this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And there's a little bit of that same sort of shenanigans going on with our boosty here, because um, the energy consumption is higher as well. Yes, the energy capacity does go up, but still, because it's managed from the output from the energy core, that can present a little bit of problems if you're ramping up your weapons or your modules, uh, especially in comparison to your energy core too quickly. So we will have to keep an eye on that to make sure that things are coming together where they need to. We'll sell some medicine here. We're a long ways for that Prime Sense STA. So let's get back into this mission chain. Let's see what we can do. We also might uh, just... Is it just the one? No, there's two of them. We're going to go ahead and grab that level four tuned Energizer SP. And then we're going to go tackle the good, the bag, and the decent. Wonderful. So as you guys can probably imagine and have probably already imagined. One of the reasons why we started a new save for the new year is also to help a little bit of our onboarding process for new players, those of you who have never seen Everspace 2 before. And that's one of the reasons. Another one of the reasons is because there's gonna be a lot of little things to highlight as we're moving through an entirely new game state. So I know that there's gonna be several of you out there who have actually uh, seen things before already and whatnot. And that's okay. We're gonna revisit that because we wanna really bring people in. I know some of you are gonna like, oh man, I don't wanna see this for the thousandth time. Okay. But we will get to that new content. We will get to those discussions. We'll get to all those really fun things that I know that you're waiting for. We wanna bridge that gap so everyone can enjoy it. All right. Oh. <laughs> I forgot he was level five. Let's, um, I think we can level up. Let's go clear out some level twos over here. Man, missiles are really good when you use them. Whew. Who'd have thought, right? All right, that's what we like to see. Now, as you can see, our Synchro Pulse is it's really sucking our energy reserves dry. So we are going to need to be rather mindful of that, hoping to get an energy core soon. Let's see what else is over here while we have the moment. Ah, missile drone. Should have caught that first. Woo, it does not feel good using an auto cannon against a shield. Which, hey, why don't we take a quick moment just to talk about damage types, okay? Just a quick moment. You have kinetic and energy damage from your weapons, okay? Super simple and easy to understand. Energy DPS hits shields. Kinetic DPS hits armor. They both hit hull. So if they have shields up and you're shooting kinetic damage at them, it's not gonna do that that much. So like in the case of our Synchro Pulse, if this was hitting their armor, after their, their shields have gone down and their armor's up, we would only be doing 28 damage. That 97 is negated. Conversely, as we were firing the auto cannon at that shielded foe there, you probably noticed it wasn't doing a lot of damage. It was taking a much greater time to break through that. It's because we were doing 21 damage per second, as opposed to doing that full powerful 85 if we were hitting armor or the hull. Because again, when you eliminate their shields and their armor, you're doing both of those values combined to the hull. So in the case of the auto cannon here, we'd be doing 106 DPS once their defenses are down, okay? Nice, super sweet, simple. Great, everyone's on board, awesome. Woo, I so badly need a new energy core. It's, it's, this is ridiculous. 
All right. Can we remove the level restriction? We can! Oh, that's nice. Look at this modification. We now have access to this Tuned Energizer SP Level 4 Energy Core, which we can slap that on our ship. Oh, gosh, it basically doubles what we had. Woo! What an improvement. What an improvement. So sometimes levels don't necessarily matter you got to look at those other values and in the case of the energy core generally speaking a higher level means yes sticky situation here but uh yeah we're gonna start seeing results immediately from that oh gosh that, that is such a feel good here let's, let's disable you for the moment excellent one well, next thing we need to do since we've been leveling up we want to get our devices in a little bit better order of course I use that so we can't apply anything to it at the moment. So after 36 more seconds, we'll be able to up the ante with our EMP. Calibrated blaster. Okay, I think, I think we're ready for this. I'm gonna try. Man, I really want the, that thruster to recharge. And again, it's recharging twice as fast as it was before. The charging rate is that little blue line. Um, and also, I want to change one other quick thing that I just personally like. I'm going to show the mouse dead zone. So you're going to see this little yeah. circle in the middle. Anything funny. Just return what you stole and I'll let you go. Never. They say that I'm just like everyone else. But with this, I'll prove them wrong. All right, cool. finally stand out. I warned you. Not so bad when they're EMP'd. Hey, nope. it's me. Did the package contain some Viridian paint by any chance? Yes, that's it. The recipient is already waiting for you at the outer rim. You know that Viridian products are illegal. I'm sorry, but I'm not paying you so well to ask questions. Point taken. Ooh, that is a missile silo. I really want the loot over here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this site out. There's going to be one more site that I want to do as well. Give us a little bit more experience and goods. Always good to get plasma and scrap from any destructibles nearby as well. I'll take these, thank you. And don't be too stingy on your alt usage, especially early game. You're really coming to pinch, I feel like. Oh, that was a wasted missile. Gotta wait for that lock on. One more base. We're gonna clean this up and we'll move on. There's a space in this one in particular that allows you to open some containers on the inside, which can sometimes be you know, decent. Fairly beneficial, I would say. Oh, those are rings. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Ooh. Armor's low. Armor's gone. Can do this? I've got this. Scrap and plasma. Scrap and plasma is almost a guaranteed drop whenever you're destroying any destructibles. So if you're looking for scrap and plasma, that's how you get them. Okay, so now we knock those shields down, we're gonna need an energy sphere in order to power it. I know you didn't see it, you're just gonna have to trust me on that one. Also gonna just grab these remaining elements that are floating about. And then we'll get our energy sphere, carry it on over.
Now we also use this energy sphere dispenser to grab another item in the area. It was nearby, just kind of like an example of usage. What's really cool about these is that these overload your energy. So you can constantly fire, constantly boost whenever you are holding on to them. Now there is a little bit of an obstruction that happens. So if you're trying to like fire, sometimes it can be a little bit harder to uh, do what you needed to do. And maybe we need to tweak how it's held in some regards, which may or may not happen. But just know that there's a timer at the start, at the top of the screen that shows you how much longer you have left to get it to where you want it to go. So in the case of this, we don't have to worry about it anymore because we were plugging it in, but it did have approximately 10 seconds left. So let's grab the goods. There's a lot of goods here. Ooh, bonfire, excellent. I see a sensor, scrap metal, lithium crystal. Yeah, we got a, we got a pretty strong handful of goods there. Very beneficial to scoop up in this early game. More credits as well. Last but not least, some more iron. And away we go. All right, now we need to head on over to Cedo Outer Rim to complete this side mission. Also, for those of you who are not accustomed to these streams, if you've been asking a question and I haven't been responding to you and instead just doing gameplay experiences, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's actually because we have a little system in place to where we answer questions kind of all in one pocket. So in approximately, uh, give or take 10-ish minutes, we'll be going through those questions you guys have asked and giving you the responses. Straight up, how it works. And you'll see Geekbyte also is you saying that in the streams too. To meet? You have the package? Yeah, here. This paint job will finally make us stand out. They will see that we're not like everyone else. Am I the only one who prefers to not stand out around here? Time to head back to the trader. We'll go ahead and activate the escape pod too because we're here. And why not? This is one of the few examples of an escape pod in the current version of the game where you can download a logbook and you get like this little journal entry. If you want to read it, you can pause the screen or whatever, but we're going to keep going. The pilot never made it back to his freighter. Uh, it may still even be there. We actually had a question in the Discord um, in the Ask RFG. And uh, just to finalize this before they start talking again, the question was along the lines of, will we have more of like those log books that we can find throughout Everspace 2, similar to Everspace 1? And the answer is sort of. There are what are called stranded pilots. That is a backer tier. There's nine people that support us at that backer tier during the Kickstarter um, who will be supplying a stranded pilot within the game. So those will very likely be incorporated to some degree, if not fully, by 1.0. I would expect them to be fully implemented. And I, you guys should too, frankly speaking. So there's gonna be kind of that element. It does look a little bit different from just a logbook. It's an actual pilot. So, but yeah. We'll, we'll get there when we get there. And all, all those added little details and creative rewards, by the way, I'm not spoiling anything here. This is all stuff that's literally on the Kickstarter page. You can see what people have backed. You can see like how many there have been and like what they would be incorporating. So you know that there's gonna be more content delivered on that front as we've only just started reaching out to those creative backers to implement these elements. Well, for most of them, there are still some that got implemented a while back, like Zerilia, for example, which is a backer supplied faction. All right, here we go. Heard the paint. Very good. Say, about those customers of yours, they were two madcaps, a scout, a sniper drone, and an elite viper pilot? Yeah, they're quite the raggle-taggle group. It's really hard not to like them, isn't it? They're exactly the same as the guys you just made me fight. Nah, there's a big difference. Return to my shop and you'll understand. All right, so we're gonna get back to shop, complete this mission, tweak some of our items, 
Then we're gonna move into the next phase of the mission chain. Actually, no, we're gonna take a quick break and answer questions, that's what we'll do. All right, I'll deal with you really quick because I have this. Nice! I love getting those challenges that you uh, weren't necessarily going for. By the way, challenges can be found in the data tab over here. We only have two right now. Outlaw hunt, kill five outlaws, scouts affected by EMP. Kill 10 outlaw drones with missiles. Let's go ahead and track that. What that'll do is it'll add it to the front of our screen. You'll see it at whole times. And then Amor, Tinker, we can see all of these elements. Craft an energy cores on here because it's like one of the things you absolutely need. And of course, there's a bunch more challenges to go later. All right, back to the game. Let's get into this. Yay, onboarding, am I right? Beautiful. Don't worry, for those of you veterans out there, there's still gonna be things for us to show and talk about, I assure you. I assure you. All right. Excellent job. Here are your credits. Great. Oh, and one more thing. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. When the two Viper pilots came by to order the paint, the first one just barged in, slammed his money on the counter, and made his proposition. While the other one began by asking if it was okay for him to dock here. When I said yes, he thanked me. Can you believe that? That's, uh, amazing. Life out here is cruel and violent. Barely anyone treats their neighbor as their equal. So just hearing a friendly thank you every once in a while means something to me. Sometimes it's the small things that really make us stand out. Uh, yeah, right. Well, thanks for the creds, I guess. You're very much welcome, my friend. All right. So we definitely have what we need on this front. We unlock a new decal for ship customization, which we might do a little bit of. Um, and also we have stuff to kind of deal with in the shop. So while I'm kind of looking over these elements, we're gonna go ahead and bring on Geek Bite, who's been moderating you guys, asking you guys for questions, and we're gonna start answering some of those. So Geek Bite, are you there? Are you with me? I am indeed. Good evening, everyone. Hello, awesome. hello, hello. All right, we've got three questions lined up. Ooh, all right. Not too many, but I think people are just stunned with your ability not to die today, which uh, is good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, first up, we've got Fred Speckvet over on YouTube. He's wanting to know, are there any colors that are especially rare or difficult to get? Oh, this is a beautiful question. Now, I kind of sort of answered that, kind of outlined that, um, but as of right now, no, there's not. And we have thought internally if that's something we should do more or less hasn't been decided on. We kind of like just having them randomized. If anything, if, not guaranteed, if, we might have random colors appear in the shop that you could then purchase so that, you know, if you did want that black color to have like that super cool metallic uh, sheen, right? Then maybe you run across, you know, you go to wherever, you, you come here to the trading outpost and he's selling black. Awesome, you buy it for like, I don't know, whatever credits amount and you could get it that way. Again, this is not guaranteed, but that's more of the direction we do want to go pertaining to the RNG surrounding colors to get you what you want versus something like saying, this color can only be found here, which then basically content gates you from that color until you've made the progression to get there, right? So yeah, just know that that's more in line of our thinking RNG, but kind of making it a little bit more accessible versus locking it at certain key parts, which doesn't as much. So, yeah. Next yeah, cool, question, cool. That, that kind of ties in with a, a question from T3Cube on Twitch uh, regarding colors. And he was asking, are ship colors an additional drop or are they a set drop from a container? Uh, there are specific containers that are, they're set in stone. So, um, and you guys know this, like whenever you're going to different locations, there are secrets that you have to find, right? And those secrets are locked in locations because all these locations are handcrafted, right? So if you find one of those locked in locations and there's a 
container, usually bulletproof containers and specialty shipwrecks, they will have a, like they'll have a color in it guaranteed in some cases. And when that's guaranteed, it's not that it's a specific color, it's a chance to get a random color, but you will always get it when you find that specific location. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So uh, again, it's not really this idea of like locking specific colors anywhere, but if you haven't found them all, if you find certain locations, you'll get a random color for finding that certain location. Excellent, excellent. Uh, jumping back to YouTube uh, for the last question from Fred Specvet again. Uh, for the sake of immersion, uh, are there any plans to add more NPC background chatter between NPC ships and bases planets? There is a bit more on the front of chatter and voiceover and stuff like that. On the front of like background chatter specifically, I'm not sure how much it's actually getting expanded by um, in regards to like how expansive. It's rather limited in comparison to a lot of other uh, factors. For example, the Hive and Adam, your, your specific clone, um, there's a bit more chatter for them, which you guys will absolutely see and hear as placeholder as we're going through this campaign. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you're free to fly on, pilot. Okay, very good. All right, so I only bought a couple of different things there. Um, we're going to go ahead and purchase the PrimeSense STA. Pre-war system scanner coming right up. Say, do you know about any medical stations nearby? Hmm. The closest is probably the one at Prescott Starbase in Union. And here in Cedo? You're kidding, right? Out here, no one ever cared about infrastructure like that. Not even during the war. I understand. Thanks anyway. No problem. We also had a chat in the Discord, uh, I think it was even today, about some lore-driven elements. And uh, yeah, we really like the world building that we've been applying to Everspace 2. Now, at the forefront, we do have this game's focus being a looter shooter, but we very much want the story and the world to all have this cohesive experience for you to take. Yes, there are going to be some things that don't make sense at all because it's a video game, but we are very pleased with the results of how this codex is coming along. And I do think that you guys, especially if you love like diving deep, deeply into the lore, I think you guys will have a lot to do so with whenever we hit that 1.0 release. Okay, so I'm talking too much. Let's get into this. I wanna just do some quick customizations. Nothing super crazy. We're just gonna be fast about it. I don't want this to look more grayed out. Yeah, I kind of like that. Like it's not painted. I don't think we have anything on the front. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's make them blue now. Haha! -ha! Cohesion. And we don't need a decal. Not yet. Not yet. And just, yeah, just casually pointing at these guys. Yeah, just, just know that there is more coming to customization. So, excellent. Also, while we're here, we're going to go ahead and upgrade our EMP generator twice. We're going to be using this a lot in a lot of different builds. So by leveling it up twice, it's increased the radius as well as how long it applies. You can see at the above status what it's currently doing and below when it would go to level four in green, you'd see what that would level up to. We spent all of our device tokens on it, however, so we can't do much more with that. Last but not least, hmm, can't quite afford the teleporter, but I'm gonna be stingy with my money currently, which is probably a bad move. Ah, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this. I'm gonna buy a shield ST and equip it. Just like so. And now we are gonna get back to the gameplay. So you can see because we tagged our outlaw hunt item. Dax, come in Dax. Any news? So I just bought the STA, and guess what? There are no medical stations out here. I told you we would come across something with enough time. I don't have time. Why am I getting the feeling you're just using me to beef up your crappy station on the cheap? Listen, I didn't have to take you in or stick your friend in my freezer. I'm trying to help you, but we gotta do it my way, with patience and under the radar. This is taking far too long. For people like us, it is what it is. 
There are no shortcuts in the DMZ. You still there? Talk to me. Yeah, I'm here. A delivery convoy for G&B just jumped in. All automated, barely guarded, and completely packed. I'll be damned if they're not hauling a medical pod. Remember what I said about being boring? This is sticking your fingers in the faces of the very people we want to avoid. I'm sorry, Dax. My friend is in trouble, and this is my chance to help him. The convoy's AI-driven. There are just a few guards. I might even manage to steal the meds without any trouble at all. I don't like it. If this operation goes south, it's on you. In your head alone. Got it? Yeah, I get it. It's been like that all my life. All right, let's go ahead and take out this broken drone while we're here. So fun little detail about this guy. The reason why we plugged this little thing in was to help you kind of learn how to navigate just a little bit in the early game. So generally speaking, it's flying through this territory that you can bump around to a lot of things. So for the inexperienced pilots out there, this is a nice way to kind of just like hone your skills a little bit just by following it. Of course, you can destroy it before it gets to its destination, but Excellent. Oh, that was something. Blaster level three. All right. Flak. Speaking of flak. Quick mining. Yay. We're going to use the auto cannon for now, at least though. Grab this shipwreck and then away we are going. Oh, nice. Another damage limiter. Can be really good to level the playing field when you're just a tad under leveled. I want to streamline this process, head straight for the mission chain for the moment. We will beef ourselves up with some signals and some jobs and stuff like that. But for now, near a transit point it is. Good. They're still locked in transit. Whatever that means. GNB takes inventory of their shipments before distributing them to the stations proper. That gives me time to look for the medical pod. And security? Don't worry. It won't detect me if I manage to avoid the scanning beams. And those can be tampered with by hacking the terminal itself. Easy going. candidates for where they might carry their medical equipment. Excellent. All right, so I don't know how many of you guys do this, but whenever I'm in this mission chain, like I take I take everything. <laughs> I uh I don't just go for the ones that are highlighted. Like I I just want all the loot. So it doesn't matter ramen, socks, whatever. I I want it, I need it. For me, it just feels better to have that early game option to sell for more credits have a little bit more flexibility five barrels of socks great but of course you don't have to do this i just am because i can i 
I also think that increasing our credits a little bit earlier here is going to give us some more opportunity later in our live streams to have some fun and doing some shenanigans stuff. Especially these. This is good. Random tech. Why not? Excellent. I'm also kind of like zipping around the scanners, but you don't have to do that. You can hack into these, much like was said during the mission chain start. Come on, where do you keep the meds? So I'll show that right here because this is the hardest one to do. Let's slow things down a bit. This should give me a few seconds. <laughs> that was like the worst stop ever. <laughs> Your authorization for medical equipment. Great. Dex? Yep. No? I just found the med pod, but for some reason it's under higher security. Do we have lock breakers in our hangar? If I can get this thing to base, I might be able to crack it. We may have something, but how are you planning to move an entire pod through super light? I am not. That it will do all by itself. Just have to get my hands on that main server. Wonderful. All right, let's grab this distribution terminal and get our medical supplies back to base. Signature will do the trick. Uh, I'm in. Forcing coordinate override. Override successful. Distributing to Rodia two. Shipment compromised. Initiate lockdown. Redistributing remaining cargo to mining outposts. Scrap. Hey, what's going on? Better get out of here. Tell me what's happening. No time. Gotta make a quick jump. I got time, Adam. I want some loot. Come on. I just want I just want some loot. Alright, we'll take we'll take the credits. That's fine. We'll get out of here. I think I shook him. Your pod just arrived. Perfect. Get your ass back here ASAP. You and me need to have a word. Delightful. All right, welcome to everybody who's sneaking into the stream. I see a lot of people uh, saying that they're enjoying the game and they're enjoying the stream. That's great. That's awesome. I want to remind you all that during these community live streams, even though we are we've started a new game, we're uh, kind of getting some onboarding going for our community and talking about all the basics. We're building up through this process. Okay. This is also an internal build. So for those who are just sneaking in, know that you will still see some updated elements, some tweaks, some modifications and additions to the game in what I am showing you even today. Some of you, those of you who've got those trained eyes will even have noticed that every single in-game cutscene that you have seen today has additions, modifications and tweaks. I am playing on very hard difficulty. Whew. There we go. Back to the home base we go. Story time. What the hell were you thinking? You know we're trying to keep a low profile. How did you reroute this thing anyway? With my GMB signature. Look, I had to do something for Ben. It'll be fine. You'll see. I'm not happy about this at all. Let's see what you got then. There's a whole medical lab in here. We can strip it for parts and ditch the vessel somewhere after. Well? Looks like you've gone. And stolen yourself a doctor.
This needs off my base now, before she wakes up. Eject that thing. Hey, hold on. What were you saying to me earlier about trusting a little? Trust is something hard to come by in the DMZ. Don't abuse it. How are you so sure she'll turn us in? Cause she's GMB. She'll reveal our location the first chance she gets. She's a doctor. We can persuade her to help us. For Ben's sake. Well, you are a clone. I shouldn't expect you to understand human behavior. Let's think about this. We thaw her out and have her decide. If she won't help us, we freeze her again and drop her off near some GNB outpost. You don't understand what's at stake. Why I needed to come back here. That medical popsicle could jeopardize everything. Well, if there's more to this, then you need to tell me what it is. There's something of great value in the DMZ. It's the reason I've been waiting all these years. One big, easy job. It could be my ticket out of here. And yours, too, if you could just play along. Well, I'm intrigued. Come on up to the control room, and I'll explain. I got a transmission through to my colleague, Maddox. He's on Prescott Starbase, in the Union system. But I can't use the jump gate. You could help me with this. That's where this mysterious job is? Not quite. Like I said, it's where Maddox is. There are others involved, and I can't do the job without them. Look, who are these colleagues of yours? And what is this job anyway? All you need to know right now is that it's a time-sensitive operation, and it'll be worth your while. Okay. So you want to use the jump gate? Exactly. And your GMB signature can get me through. Look, I know you want to know more, but... It's too dangerous. I like you. And I'm offering you the biggest opportunity of your life. And I'm willing to go along with your plan with the ice nurse in the hangar, up to a point. If she proves difficult, I want her out in the vacuum. Find me a way to Prescott Starbase, and you'll get your ticket out of the DMZ. Thanks to the new scanner, we can now reach far deeper into the system. I just had to scan the vicinity of Nerea. This is what came up. Good old Grady and Brunt. Maybe you could snatch us some spare jump keys from your old buddies. Uh, I can't head back to my former station, but maybe Nefty's planes could work. If they don't recognize your signature as the one that just raided their distribution port. You're giving their databases too much credit. Some weeks ago, a controller sold out his entire team to scavengers. And when I left, he was still listed as employee of the month. All right. But before you go, you need to promise me one thing. What's that? If you can't get the keys, come back here and we'll figure out something else. Just don't bring back an entire team of frozen gate engineers. Excellent. All right. So, um, I wanted to clarify one point within that cutscene that seems to have generated some interesting results in the communities talking about. Um, so, there's the part where Adam is you know, trying to figure out the doctor and saying like, you can't just dump her into space. And then Dax specifically says, well, you're a clone. You don't understand human behavior, right? I want to provide a little bit of context why that is. This is in fact associated with the lore surrounding the Okar colonial conflict and the clones that were used thereof. Clones are not supposed to be living normal lifespans, all right? They are not supposed to have all of these like core memories. They're not supposed to be thinking for themselves. They're really generated as biological weapons. They are bodies generated to be plugged into spaceships to go fight. That's it. That's what they were served for. In fact, their memories were in fact wiped and they were given substitution memories so that they wouldn't do anything out of line. So. What Dax is specifically referring to is not the type of clone that Adam is, because if you have experienced the story of Outer Space One, you'll know that he's rather unique in why he has these memories and how he's progressing with his own lifespan now. Dax is referring to those clones who quite literally can't understand human behavior because their brains have not been wired for it. So just wanted to provide that quick fun bit of lore context mm, such a delight such such fantastic things we do in fact think about the delivery of these character interactions all right 
All right, so uh, we don't have too much time until I want to showcase a really sick build, honestly. So what I'm going to do here, we're going to kind of like tidy some things up. We have outdated equipment like our high capacity homing missiles. That's that's OK. That's fine for the moment. Otherwise, I'm just kind of look at what we have. Yeah, we're not going to do too much, actually. We're not going to do too much more. We are going to plug in these power cells, however, have some more Atheum Crystal. Ah, why not? We just need more Atheum Crystal. Let's see if we can get that. Let's see if we can do that before we do the showcase. Should be some in the area. So this brings up another quick element here. So this is just floating in space because it's left over from one of the last times we were blasting all the Atheum Crystal. When you leave a location that has mineral deposits, coming back to it, I think it's about a 10 minute timer. It's, something, it's about 10 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Those nodes will regenerate at various parts of the map. Later, when we get our resource scanner, you'll discover which resources are more available at certain locations than others. And so certain locations will be far more beneficial to revisit if you are looking to better your equipment or your perks on that front, especially for you crafters out there and want all the passive benefits of the perks. Wanna see how much we have. We have enough, awesome. Let's get that tractor beam upgraded, whoo. That feels good. So we're gonna go ahead and go back and dock at the home base and continue this story the next time. Whew. That was some pretty good progress. Got to see a little bit of new content that has been adjusted. It's feeling pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and save this here. Oh, oh, look at that right at the top. Uh, gonna to save our new stream save. Boom, bada bing. And I'm gonna take a quick break in fact i didn't even bring my water for down to my basement where i'm streaming oh my gosh so guys get up take a quick stretch break get some water and uh yeah i'll see you back in a moment where we're going to highlight bearded frogs striker build and we're going to be running it through a lunacy 1000 rift and honestly i'm being sincere here i'm going to be surprised if i don't make it through so stay tuned we'll be back in just a couple minutes
All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the stream where we have a particular build spooled up from a user who is being active in the YouTube stream right now. Bearded Frog. This was, in fact, the first submission we received from a community build so long ago now, it seems. And he's since updated it. So he provided a brand new save, tweaked it even further. And let's just talk about this for a second and how it's going to work. All right. Um, also, for those of you who kind of missed our introduction, we are going to be doing community builds a bit more frequently. I don't know if we'll get it to every single week, but we do want to highlight these. You guys want to see them. And frankly speaking, seeing them is insane how they come together. So without further ado, Bearded Frog's build. We got really strong firepower, precision, and utility through these tools that we have. He's using Final Reckoning in conjunction with very strong sort of generic missiles, if you will, but they always auto fire through getting crits, which is a very important aspect of this particular build. Also, he's using Visions of Decay, which is going to make Corrosion invest in Injector absolutely nasty. Very powerful legendary. So using these in conjunction with one another, it's just chef's kiss. We also utilize energy injectors, damage boosters, and system recovery routines should things get a little too dicey uh, and also to save our own skin. Furthermore, the assortment of devices are as follows. We're using Avenger, from for the front shield generator. This is very powerful in a Lunacy 1000 run, which we are doing, of course. We also have Corrosion Injector, and we are increasing the damage by 80, but reduce the duration by 50. We also have EMP Generator with short circuit for that nice bit of splash damage. And last but not least, Annihilator Virus with r not in conjunction, of course, with our Visions of Decay. Oh wait, that's Corrosion Injector. Whoops, swap that. Corrosion Injector is the one that gets uh, applied from Visions of Decay. My bad. So this one's going to get placed in three different ships instead of just one, okay? That's how Visions of Decay works. Whereas Annihilator Virus still with r it's gonna affect more targets. So you're getting a lot, you can see a lot of splash damage in this particular build, as well as that constant shooting of missiles through Final Reckonings, increasing the damage of those secondaries by 500%. So. Let's get into this, shall we? Let's right, Eric, just a this. quick point from Bearded Frog, by the way. He's oh, just yeah. pointing out something. Uh, you don't forget to try and keep your missile ammo at three or less. Oh, yes, yes, yes. All right. Very good. Yeah, that also increases damage um, because whenever it's down to the last three missiles, it increases the damage by 100%. Very, very good. So here we go. You'll also notice a couple of new uh, lines of text from Hive and Adam. You, you can read them if you'd like. They may or may not get changed. Let's just get into this. Oh, another really big aspect of all of this, honestly, is that you can almost dang near spam your alt. The generation, which I didn't go over perks, that's, uh, that one's a bit important. Let's take a quick pause and do that, because this is important. We are using close call, saves your skin one time. We are using downtime warrior, so use your devices to get that constant energy for weapons. We're using crit happens for that splash damage, because this is very much an AOE build. We have critical faculty, so that we restore that alt super fast, which we're about to see, in fact, and exploitation, where increased critical hit chance when attacking enemies whose movement is impaired. Passive on the, st the striker here is that we have locked enemy targets suffer 20% speed reduction. So one target guaranteed is gonna be receiving that additional damage boost, but it's probably gonna be more based on everything going on. All right, here we go. Hopefully I don't botch this right as I get back into things. Now I'm gonna kind of seemingly waste some missiles because I need to get them down to three. There we go, much better. And you can see like, I'm a very much, I'm very much like an in the fray style of fighter here. I do not like to play the long game. Like ironically enough, the, the, um, the scout was actually my favorite ship in Everspace One. 
But Everspace 2, you know, he's ideal for long range, and man, he's powerful. Don't get me wrong. But for me, for being able to address all of these foes and the state that uh, the game is currently in, I just love being up in their grill. I love making things happen. I love making plays. And so the striker is like one of my favorites. So as you can see, we've already cleared out the first territory without so much as taking a little bit of damage. This is lunacy a thousand, guys. This is lunacy a thousand. We only got one portal that generated that. That's interesting. So we do have to be gentle in our approach because these do get a bit crazier as we go on. I'm gonna try and start over here. Whoa, a little too fast. There's also a lot of movement buffs and, and tweaks in this particular build too, which is quite fascinating. It's a lot of fun, actually. And how it all works together in a beautiful assortment, like a dance of conditions and effects that just, it's just so much pain for foes. And again, like I'm very much like in the fray fighting here. This is not me like skirting around on the outside. Like I can be super aggressive and the striker just loves this. Absolutely loves this. Now I don't love that. We need to adjust that immediately. We need a big target, a delicious target. Ah, you'll, you're good enough. There we go. Another beautiful thing about this build is that you just constantly want to be using your devices, your alt. I'd say your consumables. We haven't really needed them yet. <laughs> I'm not getting good positioning for this front shield either. Because with the front shield, what you really want to do is you want to stack all your opponents on one side of you so that it's reflecting all that damage back. But look at look how cleanly this is going, guys. Look at that. All of this is coming out of Bearded Frog and his build, but he's cultivated here. A, just a single portal again? Oh my gosh. Not getting very lucky. Oh, this could be a tricky one too. Every time an enemy is destroyed, it gains five speed, shields, armor, and hull. Five percent. All right. So let's see what's next. Peter Frog, how am I doing? Am I using it okay? <laughs> I feel like you made it so easy. Oh, also, um, you may may or may not notice um, new additions in the rifts. <clears throat> I guess I should have mention that. All right. Works great on sniper drones. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I kind of like demoed it before the stream since you had mentioned that and uh, you are not joking. It's so satisfying. You get the front shield generator. I'm hoping that we get an opportunity to do so. Kind of funny to say like, I hope we get a freaking sniper drone to show up, but sincerely. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh, it's such a feel good. Oh man, it's just like, oh, these things are so hard and so annoying and so tough. No, not with this build. This build laughs in its freaking face. I do need to be a little bit careful here. Don't want to accidentally jinx things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the damage output alone from this thing's nasty, but the survivability, I mean, like, and look, like, I'm not necessarily being the safest flying this round. I am not being the safest. I'm not using my front shield constantly, and yet we are still moving around. We've got this nice speed to adjust where we are at to handle these foes. And we're just, we're pounding through this. We're already at the last stage of a Lunacy 1000 run with this very tuned, very tweaked, beautiful build. This brawler build in a striker. Ah, so delightful. So delightful. 
I see a, a statement in the chat saying bugs portals. Uh, so, um, we are working on rifts still. I had to make sure, in fact, that our particular build here didn't reveal too much. Well, I've already said too much now. Ooh. <clears throat> but I digress. Let's get in here. This was the hardest part for me when I was playtesting this bearded frog. So, um, if I'm going to die, it's going to be right the heck now. So, uh, here we go. Let's see if I can pull this off. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, he this this enemy hits like a truck, and if you don't act quickly enough, everything can shatter around you. And there we go, Lunacy 1000 done in less than 10 minutes with this finely tuned, very well optimized brawler striker build. Gets up in your face and just explodes with all this damage. Like that's fantastic. Like that's that's amazing. Very, very good stuff. Now we're back at the home base. Look at all these little treats. Look at all how tiny they are. How how embarrassing this is for a Lunacy 1000 run. Really, Eric? Really? Is that what's going on here? This is in development. This is not final. What you see here is a product of rebalancing of the rifts. I assure you guys, when you're completing a Lunacy 1000, your loot is not gonna look anything remotely like what is currently on the screen, all right? Just making sure everyone's very well aware of that. Also keep in mind, we are at level 25 because that's what you guys can supply. You can't go higher than level 25 in the current build. Um, you might notice that I actually have some experience over level 25 right now, and that's because we are gonna be adding levels later. And Rifts are an end game system being incorporated into Everspace 2. That means Rifts will be level 30 territory. So what you're looking at on the screen, one more time, just making sure everybody is well aware. This is a part of the development where it is not indicative of your rifting experience, especially at Lunacy 1000. So, but all in all, uh, seriously, Bearded Frog, I love this build. I think this is a lot of fun and it's fairly easy to reproduce as well. The big things are gonna be like, honestly, like you could almost get away without having Visions of Decay, but it does help with all of that splash damage. Um, but Final Reckoning in conjunction with low supply missiles that are constantly firing, and then just focus firing down targets using your alt, especially, I didn't even use my consumables. You could speed run the heck out of this, and I'm sure you have. Uh, but yeah, just, it's a very solid build, very finely tweaked. I mean, just look at those values, man. Look at these values. You don't see that every day. So yeah, big shout out to Bearded Frog. Thank you for this build submission. Seriously, this was, such a treat to fly and i'm already looking forward to the next build submissions that we will have uh and i also still need to get through a slew of them when we opened up build submissions back in Oct october september of last year goodness so i will be putting the link so that you can supply a build to the forefront on our discord shortly after the stream so please know that and uh we are going to be rolling through those of you who submitted prior first but we will be moving into the space where we're showing a lot more of these builds on a constant basis do you guys want to see one more rift with this ship going you want to see this in action one more time? Yay. Or, yeah, yes. I'm curious. Because, I mean, this this thing is so fierce. It's ridiculous. One more. Okay. So, um, remember when I said the things about how rifts are, like, not done or whatever? So, I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to do some magic because I want to show you this really quick. See the spatial bypasses? Create ancient rift. Unlocked at level 25. It's an illusion. It's a lie. That is a lie. So uh, <clears throat> I need to do some wizardry. I'll be I'll be right back. One moment. One quick moment. Probably. I hope. Woo!
So I see you guys talking about like value changes and whatnot. Um, and yes, you are already onto something. I will say that. Something else to keep in mind is that we are level 25 in a dev build where rifts are designed to be level 30. So also keep that in mind. And we're back for round two. All right, so thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. It is the exact same build, uh, Lunacy 1000. Uh, we are gonna go ham. All right, let's just show the beauty of how quickly this alt recharges by just maximizing destruction all the heck. Beautiful. Actually, oh, I still had my alt on. Oh, crud. Normally it uh, recharges a heck of a lot faster because uh, you're not spending it constantly. Missed that one. Oh, we also need to get our missiles down. Oh, oh, gotta get the missiles down. There it is. Already got our alt back. Oh, a nice, nice elite that's not not near any other targets. Well, that that was that wasn't very valuable, was it? That's okay. I'm sure we'll get another go. Beautiful. One complete. What am I using the second missile? Oh, you're right. I am. Well, let's use the first one. There we go. Oh, increased movement speed. All right, this could be interesting. Goodness. What a treat. Melts it away, it's ridiculous. Nope. Something else that I quite prefer in a lot of my rift runs is like having a lot of mobility. And this, I mean, aside from the inconveniencing of getting Weber drone. This build almost doesn't need it because their splash damage is so strong. Even if you are getting something like a Weber drone on you, you can eliminate it pretty freaking fast. Oh wow, goodness gravy. And our movement speed has been slightly hindered all of a sudden. We're gonna probably waste this a little bit. All right. Woo! Okay. But I say waste, we already have our all back up. What a treat. Whoop. There we go. Whew. 
Whoops, didn't mean to fire that, but that's okay. 5% increases across the board. Oh, I see a really great question that I would love to answer. What is the use of the quantum tether? Let's talk about that very briefly because this is a core element of this build. Basically what it does is it attaches to a specific foe. When you are shooting that foe, all the enemies take the damage that you're doing to it. So, um, and with more tethered to it, it increases the damage for everyone that you have. And because this particular build allows you to regenerate ult really quick, that means that in conjunction of using this corrosion injector, that's hitting three targets, not one, with our EMP generator, which can effectively hit anything at almost 600 meter range, and then Annihilator Virus, which can affect up to eight targets, we're talking about some very serious crowd control on this particular build. It's one of the reasons why I love it. One of the reasons why I love it so much. Now, I want to try and... Oh, oh actually, we're kind of getting surrounded here. That's not a good position to be in. That's better. So here in this instance, I'm actually kind of like just taking my time going one after another. So that way we don't have something like that happen. Oh gosh. And now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna dive over here. So that's gonna be easy enough to clean up. Those added missiles. And now we get to start taking out drones. That was some pretty good splash damage you can see there. Most of you guys are over here. I'm just gonna do that. Beautiful. I feel like raiders have been probably the hardest thing for me to deal with in these particular rift runs. Ah, oh, no, our front shield generator just went down. We really don't want to get hit by that, so... Okay, good, good. Wow, that destruction. So fast! I'm like not even worrying too much about shields, I'm just like plowing through it. Because it gives those free shots from missiles. Last segment, here we go. There we go, beautiful. Oh yeah, look at that added damage. And we're done. Once again. What a treat. And again, don't worry too much about the loot drop, okay? Because again, we're making adjustments to the rifts. Which is such a powerful build. Affecting everything nearby so hard. It, it doesn't let anything stand up. So really well composed, uh, Bearded Frog. Quite a treat. rather impressed with how it comes together. Now, one last thing, and I know that there are some of you who are Lunacy 1000 runners out there, and you're looking at this and you're going, hmm, hmm, that something seems a little bit off. Yes, of course. There are adjustments in this dev build that are not present in yours, okay? So what that means is that there might be elements to this that are harder and elements to this that are easier than what you would have experienced in your particular gameplay experiences. Regardless, the showcasing of this build and just positively annihilating Rift Runs, taking care of so many enemies so quickly, 
is the primary goal here. And also we can, you know, highlight your little look as well. Because this is all your customization. This is exactly your ship. So thank you so much for the submission. Really nice. But yeah, I am already looking forward to seeing what else you guys have in store regarding your build. We can, we'll probably be doing those as well through some rift runs, maybe even some unique situations to kind of like, you know, have some fun and really showcase those elements. But once again, Bearded Frog, sincerely, thank you so much for submitting this. It's fantastic. It's what a delight. I had so much fun just running through, playing this thing. I love the way that you composed it. And seriously, it's, it's fantastic. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna transition over to screenshots. And while we are showcasing these screenshots, we're also gonna be answering questions from you guys. Now, these questions could be for even Bearded Frog, if you want, he's over on YouTube, you can ask him directly. Um, you can ask all sorts of questions regarding the content that we showed today through our story-driven playthrough session, as well as any additional questions about Everspace 2's development as we are in the home stretch to 1.0. Again, for those of you who don't know, the release date is redacted and we are absolutely delivering on that. It's not gonna change, it is set in stone. So first half of this year, not gonna change. It's quite beautiful. Okay, all right. Now, I need to do a little bit of quick prep for those screenshots, so one second. And as a normal, constant little reminder as well that we have all these places that you can go to to support us, to engage with us, to have a lot of fun. And a lot of these community elements are being serviced through the Discord. So if you want to take part in the community challenge that will be listed at the end of the stream, then you'll absolutely want to dive in there. And we love showcasing screenshots from you guys, and they generally come from the Discord as well, so that you are aware. For example, this one. This one is in fact one that was uh, brought to the Discord. And most of the time I'm showing you ones that are uh, from this space. And we'll also have instances where we will highlight Michael Selects. Michael's the CEO of Rockfish Games. He does everything for the marketing side. Uh, well, I shouldn't say everything, most of the stuff. And so he chooses a lot of fine looking shots from you guys and has even plugged them into the homepage of Everspace 2. So when people are purchasing the game, they could see your fantastic screenshot that you took. All it takes is to submit it over on Discord and that's it, that's it. That's really it, that's all it takes. Super minimal effort. And we love to highlight your stuff. Much like we just did the community build, now let's dive into the screenshots. Now, Geekbyte is gonna join me and answer some questions as I'm going through these. We're mostly just gonna like show a screenshot, answer a question and go from there. So this first shot comes from Dawn of Will who I think is a more, he's a newer user in our Discord. And he just, he he delivered some pretty nice screenshots. In fact, I got a number of them from him today. Uh, over the course of the last two weeks is the time period that these shots come from. You guys seem to like it too. Give him lots of thumbs up. So here we have just like that, your beautiful little classic fires and missiles, uh, you know, engagement and it's it's nice there's something about seeing these missile trails like going over a wing that's just oh it's, it's really really cool and if i understand this shot correctly this is a missed shot from an opponent behind this is not him firing off a missile because also this shield's getting hit by something else but regardless of all of that pretty cool scene and uh yeah nice nice shot pretty neat so, Geekbyte, go ahead and shoot me some questions we've got as we transition over to this one in the background. Right, we have a bit of a curious one from T3Cube over on Twitch. Uh, he's wanting to know if we can reveal uh, how many wings, engines, bodies, and cockpits are planned for release for each subclass. The wings, we are doing four tiers of wings, and there are four types of wings for each tier. Um, at least that's what was stated a long, long, long time ago, way back in the Kickstarter. So we're going to say that. So, <laughs> so first there's going to be effectively 16 different wing sets, right? For each class. Uh, then you will have, I think it's nine 
bodies and nine engines for each class. So that's nine total for heavies, that's nine mediums, that's nine lights. Uh, and then same goes for the engines. The engines are distinct between the lights, the mediums, and the heavies. And uh, that's about all I can answer on that front as of right now. Uh, there are going to be more elements of customization in the future, guaranteed. This is something that we have on our roadmap. This is something we've been talking to you guys for a very large amount of time, and that's not that's not changing. That, that, why, why would that change? So we are 100% delivering more customization options in the future. Everything that I have given you right the heck now has been the baseline standard. This is what's going to be hit. So keep that in mind. If you guys do want to know a little bit more about like the customization ideas, you can also head back in our YouTube channel to the vlog that says like 100 plus ships, okay? Because it goes into a little bit more detail in the behind the scenes and like why we're doing what we're doing and how we're doing what we're doing. And also has some really cool blockouts of stuff that you've seen the final results of and some that you haven't. So it could be a fun little trip down memory lane. Thank you for that question. All right, so this shot comes from the Chemical Bro. He loves these very deep, vivid shots a lot of darkness, but then it pops of color. I can't say that this is a straight screenshot. This might have been color adjusted, but it also might just have been the in-game tools of the photo mode. So it's, it's so hard to say. Some of the shots that come out of him are just so remarkable. And uh, this one, yeah, definitely gives that strong feel of owning the skies. You know, when you see a silhouette like this with a color palette like that, you probably don't want to mess with them just just by appearance alone and he does capture a nice surrounding element of color usage here with the red in the background the blue line of the planet the blue emanating from this asteroid as well as the blue from the engines the highlights etc etc so really great composition wonderful shot the chemical bro there is a reason why he is a galactic photographer in our discord all right, we're gonna look at this shot from, uh, wait a second, what's going on there? This is from Terrible Ogre highlighting some <coughs> bugs that we have certainly had in the game space. So, Geekbyte, what's our next question? Uh, next up, we have a question from Akara Vortex over on YouTube uh, that wanted to, will we see more Catalyst or weapon mods coming for 1.0? So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we talked about whenever we delivered on the Catalyst that we were going to do more right? That hasn't changed. That hasn't changed. That's still in the plans. We don't, we absolutely uh, are desiring and very likely going to add uh, a couple more catalysts into the playing field. In regards to modifiers and items and surrounding that territory, um, I... Hmm, how do I word this? There's a lot more coming to itemization. We're just going to say that straight up. So this photo, <laughs> so this photo we got uh, from Terrible Ogre, and he's highlighting the fact that whenever you cloak with your ship, uh, at least using the uh, the consumable, we had a bug, uh, had very important uh, thing to say there. Uh, I think it might still be live in your build. Uh, sorry about that, but um, with what we are working on, this is not supposed to happen. These are the secondary chambers, and these are the primary weapons. And whenever we are cloaking, it's not very advantageous for your foes to literally see your weapons. So that's definitely fixed. But it's a clever shot regardless, especially because it's taken with this very clean silhouette of an interceptor in the process. Nicely done, nicely captured. Definitely think that was a, a fun little way to highlight, you know, the gimmicks of early access, right? So thanks for having fun, beautiful. Next shot, we've go, we're going back to the Chemical Bro as we respond to another question. Uh, same user, Kara Vortex, is asking, um, will we see more variety in random locations for the unknown uh, and distress calls, etc.? We are working on more diversity of elements that can appear. So, you know, like more wrecks and more asteroids and, and all that type of stuff. I mean, shoot, we're working on more systems. You, you guys know that. And we certainly don't want to just like take from a previous system and then just like copy pasta it over. That would be super lame. Not to say that assets don't get reused because we also don't want it to be 30 terabytes worth of storage on your hard drive. But the point is 
we are absolutely still making more uh, content of that sort. Um, and yeah, I mean, you could even see it in the riffs there that we were doing today, that there's definitely some more interesting elements going on in the background at the least. Those can also appear in the foreground, in the actual playing area. We didn't have any of those spawn today. I'm kind of glad that we didn't because some of them were bugged, but the point is, yes, we do want to have more stuff that adds a little bit more variety for when you're going to those locations. And then we are also making more handcrafted locations additionally on top of that. More, 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 yes. Yeah, in the works. Yep. So this shot comes from the Chemical Bro. Again, you see those deep colorations that he loves to use, the contrast between light and dark, serving us really well in this shot that has that almost, it's almost like a horror vibe going on here where you've just got this wreckage. You can't really quite make anything out, but you've got these dark red pulsating lights ahead of you that goes into some sort of desecrated structure. And you know, who knows what's on the other side of that. You can also see everything scattered about all of these pieces of debris, some of which are brightly colored, some of them are leaking um, and within an asteroid field like what what's around the corner it's so inviting into a story what's going to happen next and i think that the chemical bros a very excellent storyteller just from taking these level of shots and also that is such a profound silhouette on the ship too that it just it really does bring it all together you're not mistaken on any of these components of like what 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 is that no you know you can see very clearly where everything's at and why it's placed the way that it is. We're gonna cycle over to yet another Chemical Bro shot, supplying us with those goods for another question. Right, last question for the time being. Uh, still on YouTube from Junior Panciotti. Uh, can some items be made that can only be acquired by crafting to increase the usefulness of crafting? I think they're a little bit concerned that crafting isn't as good as what it could be. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, okay, so there, there's a... There is an element here that we could go into general design philosophies for game development as a whole when it comes to crafting systems, okay? So um, instead of opening up that huge door and you coming to my TED talk, instead what I'm gonna say is, in short, crafting systems in looter shooters or in any loot-centric games are generally speaking a guide until you reach the end game, okay? This is very common in all of these games experiences, okay? Very few have meaningful crafting in an in-game experience. That's not to say it can't be done. And if you're looking at that and going, oh, but wait, but wait, Eric, you have modifications that you can do. Yes, but I'm talking about crafting. <laughs> I'm talking about crafting. There is a very distinct and big difference between these two elements, okay? So I'm gonna leave that kind of in that territory for you to chew on a little bit, but please note, with all sincerity, we are still developing more in the crafting territory. It still needs some tweaks. It still needs a little bit of balancing modifications. And just because we're kind of on the same topic, there's more coming to modifying as well. So not completely done, uh, but also note that what we have at its core right now in the game space it's probably not gonna deviate that much from that. So if you're looking for this very rich, detailed crafting experience that when you get to the end game, you can customize and create your own sort of like intricate, wild sort of machinations, like that is that is not the plan. That was never the plan. I also wanna point that out. Crafting has always been a means to help you through your journey to compensate for weaknesses in your build and the modifying is meant to take everything to the next level through those levels of optimization and going ham, if you will. Crafting, bring you up. Modifying, that's really going to be the icing on the cake. Get everything squeaky clean where it needs to go. All right, all right. So let's take a gander at this particular shot from, again, the Chemical Bro. Again, fantastic use of that deep, rich contrast that we see. That beautiful glowing uh, Drake star in the background cascading across the stars through this asteroid field as our brightly colored and beautifully orange ship, in contrast to blue because they're, <clears throat> they're opposite, so it's like really pops, 
just fly away from this scene in a way that sets the tone, sets this beautiful composition in a way that it's really, it speaks to me, okay? I, I love the way that this is composed. This is something that I would love to just slap on my wall, right? It's a beautiful poster that I think would work wonderful in that regard. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say other than just going, wow, it's, it's, it's nice. It's very nice. I also like the way that the way he composed the shot gives a strong sense of scale and gives it some vibes like it's within that asteroid belt uh, surrounding the planet. So the rings, the rings of the planet, which is effectively an asteroid belt, but <clears throat> I digress. So excellent, excellent. All right, so uh, with no more questions, I am going to just start going through different photos, but don't let the questions stop now. Keep sending them forward. We're gonna have a conversation. It's gonna be a nice little hangout session here as we're still highlighting the really fun, cool stuff that you guys have done. And uh, we're a pretty transparent uh, development team, okay? So like, if you have concerns or questions or you know whatever, this is the space to do that. These streams are designed, they're cultivated for you guys, okay? Which is why we're bringing more of the builds and like we love doing the screenshots and all this type of stuff. That's why we're bringing it to the forefront now. So it's good, good stuff. So this shot comes from Excel. I think Excel's in the chat. I think I saw him, Excel, sir. Was he floating over there earlier? I wanna say that he was. But it's always nice to get a taste of scope and scale just by a little bit of use of depth of field really sets this tone of i'm over here moving this speed up against this very massive structure in the distance he was here earlier okay yeah i kind of thought he was but i love the way that he's brought this together we can almost like crop it up here but you know it's, it's fine it's still it's still nice here but uh, <laughs> but love the way that he's bringing all of these details of curiosity, really, for the player. Because what's up ahead? How are we going to deal with this? But we're going to take it. We, we want that sweet, sweet loot. All the while putting even more emphasis there just through that depth of field. It's like, we're not really worried too much about the ship. Yeah, my ship's awesome. No big deal. But look at this. Look at this territory ahead. What's to come? What are we in for? Excellent. Oh, there's a typo in the marquee. That's never happened before. <laughs> Sorry about that. If there is. But, oh well. <laughs> Hopefully no one's heartbroken about that. All right, next shot comes from Dawn of Will. <laughs> Again, I said there were a number from Dawn of Will that were just like, hey, all right. People are liking this stuff. You guys were thumbing it up. I think explosions are pretty neat. I think they're pretty fun. And the use of colors on this ship do a number to the explosion colors behind the ship. It's a nice way to capture the moment, if you will. Good, good stuff. Crispy Muffin really likes this shot. Yeah, no, I think I think that um, when it comes to explosions, the reason why this one stands out a bit more, some of you are like, oh yeah, it's just explosions, see all the time in the game. Well, yes, however, the explosions can be a little bit volatile, <laughs> literally. Um, <clears throat> but when it comes to like taking photos, they can they can be incredibly fickle, incredibly volatile, um, in the sense of like how their colors are like combining or where they're positioned or if they're making the shot fuzzy. And so, for any of you guys who've ever tried like take a really good photo where an explosion is happening, it can be a pain to get a good aligned shot that captures the scene of really what you're going for. And that's done rather eloquently here. We have two very profound colors of explosions going on that are very well aligned with the particle effects being incredibly consistent overall. There's nothing that seems like a, a jarring red line shooting out or like a green arc or whatever. Like it's really come together here through that careful selection of an angle as well as whatever events led up to this. So that's why it really does stand out. It is quite a nice shot. So kudos to you, Don of Will. 
Just glad we don't have smell o vision and chat with your flatulent dog. What in the world? Did I miss something? <laughs> what is going yes. on? Slowing okay. Tetson's dog is in uh, a bad state at the moment, apparently. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, good, good luck. Uh, that sounds rough. I have a question. It has come through on, on YouTube. Um, the Charlie Op is asking, will there be uh, Mac support in 1.0? Yeah. Uh, or would you consider release a Mac version? Yeah, we consider it so much that we're doing it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We have Mac and Linux support happening um, at or near the 1.0 release. Uh, the goal is 1.0 release simultaneous, okay? I wanna be incredibly clear. That's what we are aiming for. That's that's what we've really been preaching. We're saying like, this is the plan. We want that 1.0 release with Mac, with Linux, with PC. And frankly speaking, also with console, that's kind of a fickle element to approach. We will have more information on consoles, by the way, this month, if Michael hasn't changed his mind again. Michael, 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 don't change your mind for this dang community, all right? deliver. All right, perfect. Now that the pressure is under my boss and he has a word with me, uh, you guys know that you're going to get information on consoles very soon. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, uh, yeah, 1.0, we, we really want to hit everything as hard as we can, as close as we can together. So first half of this year, absolutely. Um, max support. Cool. This shot comes from Crispy Muffin, who was uh, you know, praising the last shot, I believe. And uh, yeah, I mean, explosions are hard to capture, much like we just talked about. And uh, Crispy Muffin, you do a very good job in capturing your explosions. I think that's actually why you've ended up becoming a galactic photographer on the Discord. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's consistent work. You keep on nailing it. Your depth of field usage, your colora coloration and grading, like everything, the composition. Yeah, I mean, this one, this one's definitely of that similar quality, which is quite fine. It's quite astounding, honestly. So thank you for those captures. Always bringing us those delicious treats at the end of our streams. Also, is that a new ship? No, 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 that's your, that's still your ship. That's your, that's your same ship. Oh my gosh. I'm starting to identify players just based on ships alone. Whew, that's kind of fun. All right. All right, we're gonna cycle over to Phantom Lord, who delivered on several different shots, and you guys liked them up, so I'm bringing them over here as well. Also, reminder for those of you who are somehow just joining us, hi, welcome to the stream, you're late. Uh, we're actually gonna be concluding the stream here fairly soon, about 15-ish minutes. But if you guys have questions, you wanna chat, go ahead and drop us a line over in the chat. We're, we're being real friendly right now, just highlighting community stuff. I am going to kind of fast track this little ending though, because I want to talk about our community challenge at the end of the stream, which I am absolutely not going to forget about. <clears throat> uh. So Phantom Lord shot here again, you guys really liked it. I I really like this planet side location. It's, uh, it's a, uh, 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 uh oh, what is it called? And Andriana Starport, is that what it is? Oh gosh, I can't remember the name, but it's close to Prescott Starbase and yeah, it's, a, it's such a beautiful, like, it, it's like cotton candy clouds. It's just, oh gosh, I, I'm a big fan of this environment. I wish we had more of them. Hey, Hans Christian, Andy, Marco, Tony. <laughs> All right, anyway. <laughs> but uh, sincerely, I, I love the way that it comes across and getting this sort of overview of seeing all these stations, which are gas harvesters, by the way. These are gas harvesters. You do have some other industrial stations uh, to boot. But I do think it comes together rather nicely. Next one up we have from The Chemical Bro. Again, you can probably tell because of the way it is. But beautiful silhouette, the dark atmospheric setting, and just this massive sense of scale. And you can see so much happening in this shot too, sincerely. There's, there's a lot going on here in all the right ways you see these remarkably large ice droids you see this like this formation on the side of the ice droids telling an additional story like was this mind was there a collision what's going on here you see a structure in the side of the ice droid and you can see that the movement that the player is taking like it just, just comes together so dang well like i love talking about your photos just how they are working so dang well and the chemical bro you are always delivering so much so that the next one's also yours look at this guy just keeps on bringing the fire ah 
I wanted to show this one as well. Um, this is the fifth one from Chemical Bro now. Uh, that's a lot. But this one has a bit more color popping out and that's that's always a nice change of pace. So it's not just darkness and a little bit of color. Like seeing those very broad strokes of shadows cascading across the scenes with the orange palettes that kind of match here, making their a cohesive unit between this gas harvester that's out in the middle of a uh, asteroid field and the ship really come together. So very well done, very well done. We have another shot from Phantalor just showing us the love. Aww. Did I, was there a question? Did I see a question? Hang on. I think I saw a question. Nope, looks like you guys are good. You guys are chilling and I love it. <laughs> Some conversations are interesting, but <laughs> I'll accept. So, but thank you so much from uh, Phantom Lord for sharing your love with us. What a treat. We might need to talk about your ship colors though. <laughs> this next shot comes from Excel and I'm honestly not sure if he, if this is a modification, like if he injected this in, which is technically fan art, or if there's something behind the ship that's creating that effect. Cause I know that effect's actually in the game somewhere. I know I've seen it, I think. I'm not so sure anymore, but still, uh, I think that it's hilarious. He, he posted that, when's the thermo gun gonna show, or not thermo gun, the, the thermo, the, the flamethrower. When's the, the plasma thrower gonna show up in, in Everspace 2? Uh, you know, and I will say this though, guys, you know, we have always wanted to bring every single element from Everspace 1 into the fray of Everspace 2. We want to bring it all, but that's, you know, probably not gonna happen. We're still trying our best. Is it possible? Absolutely. Will it happen? It's not a guarantee, but just do know that of course we're thinking about it. Of course that would be a really fun thing to do. Next one up, we've got Don Awill, his third one that we're showing. Just a nice capture flying into Siren Sea. A very photo heavy field. What a delight. simple to the point again we got that very profound silhouette this almost looks like a chemical bro photo honestly almost just captured really well so well done don of will getting a lot of highlights today so much so that i got another one from him <laughs> one more and it's this kind of similar vein but just showing what he's coming up with it's a lot of fun it's really stinking Okay guys, we are nearing the end of the stream. So uh, I've got a community challenge that I want to set out for you with this last shot from Crispy Muffin, just a, just a last one, just kind of set in the background. So you guys have been waiting patiently. So as I have mentioned earlier in the stream, we are not doing a photo challenge this time around. So Geekbyte and I were talking about like other various elements that we can do, and we're gonna be establishing a couple more challenges uh, your way, and also some for myself. Um, <clears throat> in the future. But the one that we want you guys to focus on for the next two weeks, I'm gonna walk you through the submission process. So, you know, it's racing. We want you guys to push your limits, optimize the heck out of your builds, get crazy. I wanna see the fastest times you got. You can record the full race if you want, or you can simply submit a screenshot of all of your times in the Invo tab of the game. So if you are going to simply submit a screenshot of your times, you're also going to need to DM me your save file so I can check it for any naughty playing around. That's all, rather simple, that's it. And the only reason we have that caveat is a long, long time ago in Everspace One, we actually had somebody who tried to cheat in a contest. It's not fun, don't do it. It destroys the fun for everyone else. Nobody likes that. You think that you're hot stuff, you're not. I'm sorry, it's not the flex you think it is. Anyway, screenshot of your times. And if you want, you can record the whole race. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Also feel free to supply screenshots of your build itself or not. If you don't want people to like, you know, try and duplicate it, that's fine, I suppose. But if you do, and you'd be like, oh man, I, I was able to do this because such and such reasons, super great. And also if you wanna be even more cheeky and say like, <clears throat> I completed this by turning off my inertia dampeners in a gunship because I'm crazy. That's also great. You wanna, you wanna supply that, but do keep in mind 
that the individuals who will get bragging rights will be those who have the most top slots, the fastest races overall, okay? So there are 10 races. Basically, if you get five or more, then you, you got first place, right? You have to have the five fastest times, but every single race, capture all of them, screenshot, You'll be able to drop it into a Discord channel that I will be opening somewhat soonish. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Any questions? Are devices allowed in the races? Oh, I, this is a very good question. Yes, devices are allowed. You want to get cheeky? You want to get crazy? You want to do the freaking <clears throat> Zarkov twisty one and use like a fusion hook with inertia dampeners off? Dude, I want to see that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Use devices. Use every single trick in, in your toolbox go crazy have fun with it so yeah i have a feeling that over the course of the next two weeks we're going to see some really intense competition don't get discouraged when somebody's like absolutely blowing things out of the water because i do know somebody who's going to be um you know it, that's fine that's fine you know uh just do your best highlight your runs that's what we love to see this is really about you guys and having an element of Everspace 2 to kind of just like lock in and really explore more. Some of you guys haven't really done too much in the racing. You might be surprised how much fun you can really start having when you put more energy into it. All right, are dev tools allowed? Uh, if yes, can I get a dev build? Ah, oh, this is a fantastic question. Um, you probably know the answer. Um, so I'll start uploading that to you shortly after. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, I do want to mention that if you're just going to submit your times, like the info tab, and you're going to plug it into the channel, which I will open shortly after the stream, um, you will also need to DM me your save file where you had that race done so I can inspect things, okay? So, yeah, we do not want any, any sort of naughtiness behind the scenes. All right. That concludes the stream. Well done, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. You've done. You've been a. You've been a great audience today. You've asked some really solid questions. I'm really glad we've been able to continue the story. We're going to be highlighting that uh, as we continue moving on to this 1.0 home stretch for that release. That's way out in reduction. And um, yeah. So keep submitting screenshots. Have fun with these racing challenge that I've just presented you for the next two weeks on every track if you want to go ham on one specific track by all means like just corner the market on that single track or if you want to do your best on all 10 really have some fun it's gonna be so good it's gonna be a lot of fun so i'm also going to try and join the fun and, and highlight some of my uh my more harder core attempts at some of the races i know you guys have seen me doing it and i i have a little bit of skill in it so but yeah i'm gonna try and push myself even further and uh have some fun cool all right guys that concludes the stream honestly that we're good and i also want to say that um <laughs> my wife is sick right now aw aw sadness um and i have something in my throat <laughs> ah i should be fine for next week's stream uh but tuesday and, and wednesday around there if i'm like slow on the discord just know i'm probably working through something um but that being said, I'm also mentioning that because uh, <clears throat> I don't think any post-stream shenanigans are going to be happening today. Um, <laughs> I made her sick. No, no, no. Uh, probably one of my five kids did because two of them are sick. <laughs> but I digress. Oh my gosh, Geekbite, did, were, did you want to? Did you want to add anything? You want to say anything? No, I think uh, it's been rather splendiferous tonight. Uh, yes. But seeing seen the showcase of the build, oh, fantastic! Well done, Baby Frog. Thanks again for that build. I'm since I'm sincerely impressed. I'm wildly impressed with that build. And uh, shame on me for not getting to these builds sooner. Am I right? Oh my gosh! But I'm glad that you guys requested that after I did those casual questions in the Discord. And yeah, we're we're bringing them to the forefront. I, I think that these are going to be a lot of fun. And there's some pretty wonky builds in there. Uh, I might need to request some videos from some of you all because woo. But uh, still, it's it's going to be fun. I love the way that you guys have your own unique styles and how you approach things. And just being able to showcase that in the current state of the game is is such a pleasure. So cool to see how you're breaking the game. Very, very good. All right. So 
Uh, that all being said, we are gonna go ahead and transition the stream over to, at least on Twitch uh, specifically, we're gonna transition it over to Corbin, who I believe is still streaming Iris Space 2. I think that's what he told me today. If he changed his plans, how dare he? Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah. Guys, I'm really glad that we kind of got a little bit more casual way to conclude the stream today, honestly. Some of these, some of these last couple of days, man, I'm telling you what, we had an incredibly productive time at Rockfish. I told you guys that. And, um, you know, we do not, we, we don't have a crunch mentality over here at Rockfish. Like we, we are very intentional about the time that we clock in to the time that we clock out. And, uh, you know, sometimes there are moments where it's like, okay, we got to get this thing done. We got to make it happen. It's, it's got to, and you know, it's, it's beautiful in how we've had so many new fresh opportunities to really ring home this 1.0 and yeah, some of the stuff that we're doing behind the scenes, it's, uh, I'm just really excited to show you and introduce you to what else is around the corner of Everspace 2. So thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you so much for joining the streams and interacting with us. Thank you so much for your financial support. Thank you so much for your vocal support. Sincerely, it means so much when you are just sharing our content, sharing our game with others. And for all of you guys out there, we're just gonna kind of transition to the after stream stuff. If you have not wishlisted us, that helps the algorithms to guide people to us so much. Seriously, it's it's nuts how this all works. So please wishlist us. And in conjunction to that, if there's any additional sales up to that 1.0 release, you'll be notified of them. You'll get that, boom. And you'll know that you can purchase it for the cheapest price it will possibly be because when it does hit that 1.0 release, the price point is gonna go up, okay? I note this every single stream, I'm still gonna have people like, I can't believe they did this. They didn't tell anyone. It's gonna happen, I don't care. I wanna make sure you guys know, because I, I love you all, especially those of you like come back to these streams every time. Thank you so much. Just, yeah, it's gonna go up in price. Be aware, wishlist it for your sake, also helps us. Goodness, amazing. All right, that's it. That's all I got. So we're gonna transition over to uh, Corbin and uh, yeah. So, yeah, you guys have been awesome. I have been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for Rockfish Games. Don't stop being awesome. I will catch you in the next stream. Toodles!